Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Code Blue, dedicated to all things unidentified, brought to you by bluebook.tv, the platform of the unexplained. Please check it out. It's free. I am Thor, and thank you for listening. The topic of this episode, past life memories. It is incredible, and it is real. Children as young as two years old, recalling vivid memories from previous lives, being different persons in a different place and time, providing details they couldn't possibly know. It upends everything we think we know, suggesting the reality of reincarnations and concepts of life after death and the possibility of an eternal soul. Many renowned psychiatrists have studied this phenomena. Raymond Moody, MD, a doctor of psychology from the University of Virginia, as well as Ian Stevenson, former director of perceptual studies into the paranormal at the University of Virginia as well, who began studying the phenomena back in 1961, and Jim Tucker, a private practitioner of child psychiatry and a Bonner Lowry professor of psychiatry and neurobehavioral sciences. It is not a coincidence that psychiatrists are at the forefront of research into the phenomena. It began, after all, with concerned parents bringing their three-year-olds into the offices of child psychologists seeking help when their children began telling highly strange stories. A pattern emerged. To this day, over 2,500 cases have been thoroughly examined. It is a worldwide phenomenon existing in all cultures and religions regardless of beliefs in reincarnation. The psychiatric profession calls it pseudoscience, codename for nonsense, including Christopher Friends of the University of London, a parapsychologist who deems any notion of children's past life memories as fabricated. He points to the key memory recovery methods of hypnosis and regression therapy as culprits explaining that when patients are asked leading questions about what happened before the womb, the human unconscious mind fabricates narratives where facts and fictions become indistinguishable, a condition called cryptomnesia. But remember, it started with concerned parents walking into waiting rooms of child psychology doctors asking for help. It did not start with hypnotherapy. The 2,500 studied cases are likely to be only the tip of the iceberg of actual cases, most involving children between the age of 3 and 5. By the age of 10, it seems, their memories of past lives have faded. James Leininger was only 2 years old when he started waking up from terrible nightmares. Airplane crash, on fire, little man can't get out. He repeatedly cried out. When his parents pressed him on details, he said he had been a pilot whose plane was shot down, offering striking details. The aircraft carrier's name was Natoma Bay, and it was the Japanese who shot him down. He remembered Jack Larson, who flew with him, and he drew pictures, iterating details with obscure terminologies like drop tank, and that he flew a Corsair whose tires always went flat, he said. Let's remind ourselves James made those statements at the age between 2 and 5. They matched the fate of a pilot named James Houston, who died during World War II flying a Corsair off the Natoma Bay in the Battle of Iwo Jima on March 3, 1945. According to Ralph Clarbor, a gunner on another airplane that flew off the Natoma Bay, he was right next to James Houston's plane when it was shot down nearly 50 years before James Leininger was born. He even showed up for a reunion, meeting his friends, where details of his recollections were confirmed by first-hand witnesses. The belief in reincarnation exists in every culture, including in Hinduism, where the whole system is predicated on life going through birth, life, death, and rebirth cycle. In Sri Lanka, a toddler heard her mother mention a town called Kataragama and informed her this was where she drowned when her quote-unquote stupid brother, mentally disabled, pushed her into a river. She named her father by name, a flower salesman by a Buddhist temple, and that she lived in a house with a window in the ceiling, located next to a Hindu temple, 
so outside their house was always littered with smashed coconuts, symbol of the deities of creation, protection, and destruction in Hinduism. Of 30 similar details stated by the toddler, 27 were verified as accurate. Another deceased World War pilot showed up as Carl Eden, born in England in 1972, who at the age of three started telling bizarre stories of his past life as a Nazi pilot. Unexposed to history or propaganda, he knew the salute and how to draw a swastika. He said his father's name was Fritz and that he flew a bomber, describing it in detail down to the red foot pedal used to release the bombs. He was describing a Messerschmitt bomber. In 1997, when Carl was 25, a Messerschmitt bomber was dug up in the English countryside near a small town named Middleborough. The pilot's name was Heinrich Richter, father's name was Fritz, and his right leg had been severed at a spot where Carl Eden had a birthmark. An overwhelming 70% of children with past life memories remember their death as being traumatic. And there seems to be a connection between cause of death and physical features, birthmarks, scars, as was the case with Carl Eden. Another puzzling element of this mystery is the resemblance. Sometimes there seems to be a real likeness between the past life person and the current one living. In the case of Carl Eden, an uncanny resemblance. Perhaps the most documented case is that of Ryan Hammonds, who by the age of three provided 55 details from his past life in Hollywood, including pointing at himself in a picture book about a May West 1932 movie called Night After Night, as the actor and agent named Marty Martin, who died in 1964, 40 years before Ryan's birth. He said he danced on Broadway, traveled to Paris, and was known for giving aspiring actors sellable stage names. All these details have been researched and verified to be true by Marty's living sister and Hollywood archives. Five-year-old Luke Ruhlman had never been to Chicago, yet remembered being Pam in a previous life, telling his mom Erica he took the train to Chicago all the time and that he died jumping out a window because the building was on fire. He remembered going to a place he described as heaven before being sent back through the tunnel to become me, he said. In 1993, 19 people died in a fire in the Paxton Hotel in Chicago. Among the victims was Pam Robinson, who had died by jumping out a window rather than burning to death, 13 years before Luke's birthday. By accepting the mystery of past life memories as real, by the evidence, a whole new vista of opportunities opens up, where we must redefine the world we live in as much more complex, hopeful, and enduring than we can see from the vantage point of a short lifespan with finite interpretations of life and death. We are like insomniacs living with memory loss and poor visibility. And that is why everything out of the ordinary becomes unexplained phenomena, a paranormal mystery. At the Orlando Vigil for the 49 victims of the Pulse Massacre, attended by thousands of people, a bell tolled 49 times, once for each of the victims. At the same time, a photographer at the event caught 49 wild birds flying overhead. They had not been released, they weren't white doves. It seemed like a coincidence. Perhaps we live in a world where there are no coincidences. You can watch or listen to this and other podcasts of the Code Blue series on Project Blue Book and bluebook.tv. Please check it out. It's free. This has been a Code Blue for all things unexplained and unidentified. Please subscribe. And each day, let's show some compassion and kindness. I am Thor, and thanks for listening. See you next time.